Hello everyone and konnichiwa to the second episode of Summer Lake. This is Japan. Welcome to Japan. Today we are going to build a um, Japanese macaque habitat, but this is only the animal that goes in here. Furthermore, inspired by Disney again, we do something way more big than only a macaque habitat. We are building a little Japan, and the idea behind this build is a little Japanese town that is more classical, a bit more historical rather than modern, and is inspired by a lot of these mountain villages that go a little bit more towards uh, the Mount Fuji, and Mount Fuji itself is also a little bit of a topic on today's video. Before we really start talking about what I'm doing, let me just get some, some service stuff done. So first of all, this um, episode will be fairly long um, and uh, I already did way too much and I already did cut out more than 50% of the footage, which is just ridiculous. Um, and that means, uh, means also I, I will first of all not talk you through the entire episode, so I will only have like halfway through my commentary, maybe even less, but you will get a real-time part at the end. So for those of you who love to skip to the end, um, you can do this and see the uh, work in progress result because that's the second thing. We are not going to finish this entire thing today. I would say though, it's like 80% done. Um, it's already pretty damn good um, and I like it a lot. So most of it is done, but I just need some time uh, to finish it off. It's it's just some minor things, minor tweaks and stuff like that. So uh, for the final cinematics and tour and uh, just looking at it as a finished status, I just need some time and the plan is, uh, to deliver on the weekend two episodes of Summer Lake. I think you guys might be up for it. Um, so it, it's going to be Japan uh, B, if you want, or Japan 2. Uh, I do not consider this as an entire new episode. I won't make a time lapse. I will only show you the finished result. Um, most of the things is going into making the habitat work uh, because as of now, the area is more or less done, but the habitat itself is not really working because how the climbing works in the game. But yeah, now let's talk about this habitat and what is the inspiration for it and how is the setup. Now you can see that I'm building a little a little Mount uh, Fuji over here. Now this is just resembling a little bit of a, actually you can, you can basically take every uh, mountain with a snowy peak if you want, but it's just like very subtly inspired by Mount Fuji um, as something in the distance you can see from, for example, Tokyo. Um, and the idea about this is that uh, in many, many of the great photos you can find on Google when you just Google for like um, landscape Japan, which is kind of the stuff I do before I approach some stuff, uh, you basically always have Mount Fuji in the background. Very small, but even though this is a gigantic mountain, which is the reason why you see it on most of the, uh, of the wonderful um, images and and therefore I wanted to give this thing uh, the proper place that it deserves and I wanted to put it exactly in this um, point here and this is also why we are starting with it I, I really figured that you know that way I, I made sure that this gets a central point over here and it is kind of a little mini weenie in this area even though it's not going to be the main weenie over here but what am I telling telling you guys have seen that from the thumbnail potentially now as for one of the special things of this area, we are going to talk about these hot springs over here. Now, one of these things um, I, I wanted to tackle and maybe just kind of raise the bar a little bit of things I haven't done yet. There is one thing I found when I was looking for natural habitats of the Japanese macaque. There's there's just one thing you can not ignore and this is that these animals seem to, to be bathing all the time. They just seem to be living in these hot springs. No matter where you look, they're just like chilling in these hot springs uh, while in very snowy conditions. And trust me, I've done already some cool testing in here, how it looks when it's snowing. We will look at this on Saturday. Once I've finally done it, you'll get some very beautiful uh, lovely screenshots and cinematics from that because it's just looking way too good. I couldn't include this in today's episode because I only have them from testing and the, the whole thing wasn't set up at this time and you know the final result unfortunately does not work yet mainly for the reasons I already talked about. Um, yeah most of it being uh, the climbing mechanism which is a bit unfortunate but yeah. Um, now back to the hot tubs and uh, the hot springs. I kind of fake them obviously because the animals as they work in game monkeys do not go in water. In fact they ignore it. In fact you can even use it as a natural barrier and I I think I just wanted to kind of create a fake water where they go in. So if you've seen that I've, I've used the forage boxes as, um, that it, uh, as, as location where they go, as destination that is set. Um, and actually because the, 
how this thing works and how the VFX work in a game. The cool bit about this is that basically the game, the animals and the keepers don't really see the water effects at all as, as being there or as water effects. Um, so they use the forage box simply as a forage box. So they go in and uh, kind of throw the food in and then everyone is going into the bathtubs and having a bath. It looks like because they're like sitting in there and eating but with the vfx effects mixed through it it lovely it looks like a uh, lovely little macaques having a little um yeah just a little bath and this is this is really cool i like i think it's one of these things i haven't tested yet but i think this brings in a kind of a little bit experiential thing again and yeah that's that's hopefully why you guys are here for and i wanted to to make sure that i deliver on that but yeah now as we talked about that let's talk about the next thing and this is the the weenie so to say um yeah it is a really huge pagoda even though it's not that huge to be honest i i made sure that the dimensions on this pagoda are somewhat you know somewhat um okay-ish and not too crazy i in general this area uh, was meant to be a bit more realistic in scale um using a bit more force perspective to make things appear bigger than they really are and and all these kind of little tricks you would see in disney parks as well because again inspired by disney so we should definitely try and just leverage also the techniques that uh, disney has used in their own parks as well and so, yeah, they use these kind of landmarks to, to draw people somewhere. And in this case, I use the pagoda to draw them here because this is also going to be the central, like the central uh, viewing platform. And uh, you can actually see a few things from this uh, viewing platform. And I guess it's really cool because it, it definitely um, has a good location. You can also see some other cool stuff from this location later on in this project. Um, if everything works accordingly, um, I think you will be able to see some cool stuff from this position. Um, and yeah, I'm just I'm just like really waiting to see how this turns out. Uh, but yeah, this this pagoda is um, relatively detailed. I want to say I was trying to go to not go too crazy with the pieces already. Um, I ended up going quite crazy with the pieces in this area anyway. So yeah, it's. Uh, what am I even saying? My name is Rudy Renkamel and I use way too many pieces um, and I'm not even sorry for that, okay? So you can quote me on that. <laughs> this, is, this is how it is. If you ask Frontier, um, they already know it and yeah, well, they, they feel bad. Um, no, <laughs> they don't feel bad. I guess they feel good, but anyways. Um, one thing I've done at the end of the day and talking about pieces, yeah, I made a custom roof um, just for just for the central element here for the spire because I wasn't just happy with how it looked. Um, and I think for the perfect look of this pagoda, we needed this um, kind of rotation in the spire and the the size of it and, and just in general this kind of spire. And honestly, the bamboo pieces, just they are the perfect Asian jingles. And you will you will basically see me using them through the entire build today. They they, they are my one and only go-to piece. Um, so it's, it's kind of ridiculous though, but um, yeah, I just love it. And as you can see, just uh, copying it around. Uh, and from distance, you, you don't even notice that this is not the normal in-game roof. This is how good these pieces work together. And I'm, and I'm just a little bit of a fanboy of these pieces now, but yeah. Seeing this time-lapse now also make me realize how much I have done. So guys, again, little disclaimer, I will not be able to do that much for every single country. It's, as always in these projects, you, you just start doing something and then at the end you just completely go crazy and, and your mind goes like completely um, completely nuts with all the new input you have. And honestly though, one of the biggest challenges for me in this Asian area was I, I was actually taken out of my comfort zone. I've, I've not done that many more or less realistic Asian things. I've done some pagodas and stuff for the franchise mode, but that's not fair. That's just like, you know, you can actually get away with everything just because it's franchise and, you know, you use the the fact that it is franchise, you can use as an excuse throughout the entire series. I'm not even, you know, I'm, 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 not, I'm not even feeling bad saying this because franchise is meant to be focused on the development of your zoo management wise and, and size wise and uh, yeah, having more, more animals, making sure that they go good and do well in terms of how the game wants you to treat them so it's not about making the perfect architectural style stick so um, I'm, I'm not even feeling bad saying that but yeah in this way over here I wanted to do something different and now as I said the the main idea was that it's not going to be f uh, 10 different areas which are only having one animal in and that's it 
and just one habitat. That, that would be pretty boring. I want you guys also to, to be excited for it because it is about the country itself. It's not only about the animal. We will look for some animals that do fit in. We will do some cool stuff with it. But the main focus is making the country work, make you feel to, to actually enter this country. And not only because there's, a, there's an animal from that country, as I said at the beginning. It's just like you need to be in Japan, okay? So I want you to be in Japan when you enter this area. And I think I even I even focused more on the overall um, environment than on the habitat itself, um, which might also have, have caused the issues I had at the end. But yeah, you can actually tell that I was trying to really emphasize the Japanese architectural style from, as I said, a bit more classical. Um, wasn't going too much into the modern Tokyo Tokyo thing. It, it just, you know, I wanted to make it more classical. Um, these Japanese um, building with all the, all the, you know, wood in it and, and these clay tile roofs and, you know, all these kind of things, um, making this work together and using the pieces to the max so that you, you can actually have really at the first glimpse you feel like being actually in Japan and I wanted to make sure that you can really distinguish this from China and other um, Asian themes that I might have done already in the past. So I think the in-game pieces, um, they naturally push you a little bit towards the Chinese uh, Asian architecture if you're, uh, if I, uh, I'm completely right here, at least that's my feeling. Um, so you have to manipulate them in a way that you get this uh, more uh, Japanese style out of it. And to be fair, I haven't been too much of an expert um, when it comes to these kind of different architectures. I, I can distinguish the Thai architecture mainly because I've been there already um, and I feel fairly comfortable at some point to say what is Chinese. Um, but when it comes to differences to Japan, I needed to actually, um, yeah, just, just do some research and look at, at some pictures and, and just making sure also that I make the gardens work because again, um, Asian gardens are not like Asian gardens, okay? So Japanese gardens are different than Chinese gardens and Chinese buildings and pagodas are different than Japanese pagodas. And I try to apply most of the rules that I got from the images and from the research um, in here. So uh, for example, the usage of color a little bit different the usage of of how the shaping of the roofs is it's slightly different for uh, for japan than it is for china and i also try to make sure that i use a lot more um the the kind of um yeah i think i I think the one thing I want to compare it with is from uh, Matrix when they are in, in when they're learning to fight when Neo is fighting against Morpheus. Morpheus the first time um, in the simulation they are in in one of these uh, typical Japanese little um, buildings. I want to say I, I'm 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 losing the name. I, I just had the the word in my mind but just completely lost it again. Um, but this is kind of the main inspiration. And if you guys remember, I don't know if there's anyone. I would love if there's anyone in the comments now who has seen my Matrix coaster of Planet Coaster four years ago, please let me know that you are one of those people who's sticked around for four years. I would feel incredibly honored and, and just like excited to hear from you guys. But when this was the last time I really went into Japanese architectural style by even, you know, by even using this only for the movie and not for making this. So that's actually the last time I did it. Um, but yeah, now only if you guys want to have a new um, Rudy uses pieces for different style. Here you go. We have a topiary bird used as a new piece for a little Japanese or like Asian inspired little bush tree if you want. I haven't seen that one in game. I even haven't seen Mike doing this tree. So I tried to, to do it myself and Honestly, though, I'm quite happy with this one. If it's not about the 320 pieces per three, <laughs> um, I think it's, it's looking fairly decent. Um, and I'm, as I said, I'm, I'm just quite happy with, with how that turned out uh, to be looking. And I think it fit more than all the other top yellow pieces we had. And yeah, just, just overall, I'm quite happy with it. Now, before I leave you guys alone with the music, I wanted to quickly now uh, just talk about the... Um, yeah, the, the just in general, the um, habitat itself, because the habitat, as I said, is, yeah, quite difficult, <laughs> uh, even though it isn't really that much of a difficult habitat per se. It's difficult because how I set up the area and how I used exactly these things. I even, I, okay, that was the perfect timing. Now, these walls I built over here, the um, 
more or less um, Japanese wall to kind of um, have a little natural border or like architectural border, I should say, uh, towards the next areas that are coming in the future. They were the main issue. Obviously, I used a lot of wooden pieces and nearly every single piece in the game that is wood is climbable, which, you know, in its core is great for the game and it kind of creates the incredible freedom we have in the creations. However, we do need this kind of button to make sure that they are not climbable at times to just decide because the whole wall is just like one gigantic climbing frame for the macaque and I I have no idea how to avoid that because it almost seems like they can jump onto it from every single position they start to completely glitch through it and and all these kind of issues I have um, are down to this wall in in general and I need to make sure that I do something about this which I haven't figured out yet exactly I if you guys have an idea please let me know in the comments down below um, because that would be awesome I don't really have I don't really have uh, an idea right now. The only idea I will show you later on in the real-time part is a glass barrier just a few few meters in front of it, but it obviously destroys a little bit of the overall look and feel, but yeah. Now guys, um, before I leave you, I really do hope that you enjoyed it already until this point in time. Please make sure to leave as many comments as you can. Let me know all of your feedback regarding the architectural style. Have you been to Japan, for example, already? And can you tell me some little details you caught up and, and just that I can use in here? Because again, I'm not done yet and I can just take some feedback. I'm also in talk with Mr. Sylph. He has also been to Japan already and he's way more of an expert in, in this kind of stuff than I am. And uh, he's, he's constantly giving me some feedback on that and I'm, I'm really hoping to improve upon his feedback as well but if you guys have some more feedback let me know in the comments down below and let me know what you wish to see for the future of summer lake until then i leave you alone with the music and enjoy your day so far make sure to stick with me until the real time part in the end have a good time and enjoy
All right, everyone, here we go. This is the real time part as promised. And you can see we are in little Japan, so to say. I've done quite a bit off screen as well, but um, as I said, this is going to be work in progress and I will have to do a second part of it, mainly because I couldn't get the habitat to work. It's, um, well, you can, you know, the climbing mechanics in this game make it fairly hard to build a habitat this way. But anyways, let's explore a little bit this area. And as I said, uh, there is still a little bit to do. So before we go to the real habitat, let's take this, this route here to the right hand side. So it's, it's kind of going through this little Japanese garden here. So you have the uh, fictional Mount Fuji there in the background. And then as we go a little bit more into this area, you can see this will be filled in with a lot more shrubbery and stuff. And uh, I will also um, do some other little things here to make the garden finish. But all over, I, I think I like how overgrown it is, how lush it is. And I, I might even make it even more lush in the future. And then we come over here where you can see those uh, two shops being uh, around the corner. And then my favorite little thing Thing over here is the little sushi um, delivery uh, band if you want to call it that way where you can grab some sushi and then you know just sit down here it's more like a little takeaway though because as you can imagine this is um, you can kind of order over here and then you just go and once your delivery is here you just grab it and, and get a seat because at the end of the day it's a Disney inspired theme park and then you have to have a lot of stuff going through here to people you know people getting some food um, and as we go over here uh, you can see there is still a little bit going on on the left hand side here we have a little glimpse into the habitat there's also a little feeder here uh, hoping that some of the macaque monkeys will be here um, and if we you know just go a little bit uh, higher up at this little incline here you can see there is this big temple a little pagoda tower uh, showing off for us there's also not yet filled the little plant to the left hand side and you can you can just see that tower, but the habitat is more or less hidden for you, which uh, was still uh, my plan. And then this is my favorite little garden over here. It's just so, uh, it's just kind of a little bit crampy and whatnot, but it's um, overall just very Japanese and, and just kind of, uh, Asian inspired little garden anyways and I've hidden actually a little toilet block in here so that people do actually go here I will put a door so it doesn't look too weird indeed But yeah, just making sure that this all gets uh, some kind of nice views and stuff. You can see the pagoda building um, But yeah, you still have some time guys to give me some proper feedback on that Also this staircase is obviously not fully done yet But yeah, as you go in here you get this wonderful pagoda and from over here you have this wonderful view over the entire area you 
you can really tell uh, a lot here you can still see the tree of life in the end uh, in, in the background and you can see all the japanese little things here you can get a glimpse of uh, the macaques playing in the background here this is the idea they will get a climbing rig over here so that you can see them climbing i will have to redo all over here with the rock work it's not meant to be real i just try to make sure that they cannot escape but well they, they can still escape so there's a lot of work for me to do um and yeah as i already told you in the time lapse i will then try to squeeze that into the weekend I'm making two episodes the final showcase of that one over here um and then uh, for the next uh yeah next country which i'm not sure if i will be able to deliver it to the weekend um and if not we will do like japan 2.0 and then uh, go on next week with the next country but yeah for now this is how this area looks on top here if we just go back down this little alley um as this was really planned to to look like a little a Japanese alley area I just I think some of the views are really cool there are some windows missing too it's just as I said it's work in progress but it's already way too long to not make an episode out of this I I just I just don't want to let you guys wait too long because I think it's really nice and you can really tell this and yeah this this might be my favorite view over here so you have the macaque habitat um, with the pagoda and you can definitely tell these hot springs in the middle here. I think they're really cool because these hot springs um, definitely give you the idea of, of what I wanted to achieve, as I told about, uh, talked about in the time lapse. Uh, this is something I haven't seen in the game yet, and it's a bit unfortunate, but these macaque monkeys really do sit quite a lot in these hot springs and chill down. We do have some forage boxes in here, as I said, um, so they do sit down in here. I have seen that already, um, but yeah, it's unfortunate that they do still escape. You can see I've, I've done a little trick here that Zeus actually do as well in real life we have this uh, glass barrier just can uh, just in between so they cannot get to this fence and climb out but all the rest of this habitat is just not completely done yet but yeah just there are so many cool vistas over here i can actually use um yeah i i, I don't really know what exactly to use to be honest but uh, i think this looks all over the place looks very nice indeed and let me just zoom out a little bit so you get a get an idea of how my little Japanese area looks like. I'm not even sure, like, maybe this is even going to be like the thumbnail because I feel like this garden really has some proper potential in it and, that, and then the pagoda in the background just like all over looks very, very cool, I guess. Maybe a bit too cluttered, I don't know. Um, but the, like, you know, just for a thumbnail, but just look at all these layers. I think I really, I'm really very happy with how this, this turned out to be looking. Um, yeah, anyhow, guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, episode. It's fairly long, uh, so I really do hope you, you held it through it. And uh, yeah, just for the last couple of words, um, in case you haven't been on this channel prior to today's video and you like the content, make sure to subscribe. I really would appreciate that. I would be more than happy to welcome you on this channel. And also, if you haven't been following me on my Instagram, I would also love to see you guys over there. All the links for all my social stuff is in the description down below. Um, um, and yeah, I wish all of you a very happy hump day and I talk to you in the next one.